Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It's Tiffany again. Um, for those of you just tuning in, thank you. For those who are returning, welcome back. Um, so this is a much better view than last week. Um, I'm glad that you guys could bring come back and join me. So, welcome back to Smutnet Reviews. And I'm glad that we were able to catch up last week. So, just as promised, I will be returning. Um, trying to do at least one video a week, if not more. Um, I wasn't able to do more than one. So, I'm getting, I'm rolling back into the swing of things this week with my second video um, in a while. Uh, so, this week we're going to be covering a standalone book. Um, I know that previously I was going over a very... Um, extensive series and for those of you who are familiar with that series and would like me to get back to it I promise I will I will be returning to the Shayla Black Wicked Lover series um, there are at least three or four other books that have been added to the series and I was still very excited still very enamored with that series however I figured it'd be very easy for me to roll into uh, these reviews and get my footing again with standalone books so this week I'll be doing a standalone um, next week we'll see what happens when next week gets here <laughs> I may pick up um, two videos next week and do one that's a series and one that is a standalone which sounds like a really good idea so I may try to uh, plan and incorporate that but thank you for being patient with me and sticking with me so on to the main subject the book for this week looking inside uh, this is by Beth Carey um, and this is a book that I stumbled on in Barnes & Noble. So, I didn't have any real aspirations of reading the book. I was in Barnes & Noble with uh, two friends of mine. Uh, shout out Sophie and Maribel. Um, and I stumbled across this book. Um, just, you know, perusing the aisles, seeing what was available. And reading the back cover, it sounded pretty interesting. So, I decided to pick it up, see where it took me. Um, so, Looking Inside was, is a standalone novel uh, by Beth Carey. It was written in uh, 2000 and, hmm, I believe it's 2016. Um, Beth Carey is a fiction author who has so many titles under her belt, it's ridiculous. Um, but I'm a fan. I'm especially a fan of her Breathless series. Um, so this was an easy uh, decision for me to say, okay, I'm going to try that out. Um, so with that being said, let me discuss a little bit about this book. Um, so it's about a young lady. Her name is Eleanor. Eleanor Briggs is a librarian, for lack of a better term. She works at the library. She doesn't have the most glamorous job in the world. But um, Eleanor has a lot going on at the moment. Um, she's got a secret agenda. <laughs> Um, Eleanor is enamored with a gentleman named Trey. Um, but Trey doesn't know Eleanor exists. But she has a plan to make that change. Uh, so basically what happens is Eleanor's sister, her older sister, passed away. Um, very young, very short notice. It's very jarring and it's, you know, sad. Um, and so... Eleanor is going through the process of trying to grieve and decide what to do with that. But her sister Katie was kind enough to leave her her apartment. And she left Eleanor with some parting words, which were, To find your happiness, um, live your life to the fullest possible capability that you have. And so Eleanor decides to take this upon herself to do so. Because what Katie doesn't know is that Eleanor has discovered this man that she's kind of got a crush on through Katie. Katie lived in a wonderful apartment, uh, this great condo in Chicago. Um, she was an up and coming uh, mover and shaker. She was, she did well for herself. And Eleanor discovered Trey one night while she was staying over at Katie's. Trey lives in the building across the street. Um, and Eleanor, by pure happenstance, was in Katie's guest room, and when she looked out the window, she could see Trey having sex. And of course, 
with my books being what they are, and again, Smut Nut Reviews, um, this intrigued Eleanor. So, she continued to spy or peek on him, and it was all very innocent, um, until Katie passed away. When Katie passed away, Eleanor, in trying to grab life by the horns, decides that she wants to see if she can get to know Trey. Kind of like a Mount Everest. She's going to set her sights on this guy and she's going to try and climb him, for lack of a better term. <laughs> um, and what ensues is a very interesting um, kind of relationship in the way they decide to come into it. What Eleanor doesn't know is Trey has his own issues that he's trying to figure out. He's I won't say he's not doing well with women. He's gorgeous and he's rich and he's intelligent um, and he's cool. And so it's not a problem for him getting women, but he doesn't seem to be able to, doesn't seem to be able to hold on to a relationship. And so he decides he's going to take a sabbatical from sex and he's going to try and figure out how to get to know women on a deeper level because maybe the issue is him and so he um just as he decides to take the sabbatical from women from sex he meets Eleanor and they meet at a function that I wish was real like that was one of the things that caught me about this book um there is a function where you basically disconnect from the entire world you take a book of your choosing maybe something you is a favorite read of yours or something that you've never read before and you pull it up and you decide to detach so you take your cell phone you take your cameras anything electrical you put it in a bin you put it in a box you go into the library and you read for however long you want to connect with this book and so Eleanor saw that Trey was signing up for it and this was her opportunity to grab his attention and in doing so she decides to dress up in some of her sister's clothes because when her sister passed away she left her her apartment um there was still plenty of clothes these are designer clothes and any woman within their right mind is not going to throw them away so she uses some of her sister's clothes she has empowered imbued herself with this new attitude of you know grab life by the horns and so she goes to the event specifically to get Trey's attention. And oh, does it work. Not only does she get Trey's attention, but she has every guy's attention in there. Um, and when it's all said and done, she, she goes there, she dresses seductively. She's not dressed promiscuously. She's not dressed, you know, slutty. It's seductive. She's there with a purpose. Um, and he notices her right away. And she sits in his line of sight. She's reading a book that, for all intents and purposes, everybody knows is kind of, you know, risque. Um, and she draws him to her. And Trey is there trying to understand women. He's reading Pride and Prejudice, trying to get an understanding of what it is that women want. And since this is probably one of the most famous books in the world, he decides that this may be the right course for him. Um... But he can't keep his eyes off of Eleanor. And so, um, when it's all said and done and she's ready to go, she slips him a note and she tells him, he got your window at midnight tonight. He's not sure what it means, but he does. And when he gets home and he's uh, looking out his window, he looks across the street and there's Eleanor and Eleanor is doing a strip tease and he's floored and he can't keep his eyes off of her of course um, and I'm sure you guys probably know what happens from there um, <laughs> but it's all very exciting and she's excited and she's completely baffled as to how she was able to pull this off but they continue and they meet at the next event and then she does a fan dance for him it's all very sexy very sensual very beautiful um, and this goes on until he finally asks her you know to go out or go for a drink 
Um, and she agrees. They go to his apartment, and they both decide that a relationship is not in the cards. They're not. Neither one of them are looking for a relationship. She's looking for something that will help her plateau to the next step of her life, and he's looking for something unemotional so he can figure out what it is he wants from women. But of course, it never works out that way, does it? Um, both of them, of course, are on a crash course for each other. Um, and <laughs> that's how it works out for them. Um, I think the interesting part about it is that while Katie feels like she, I'm sorry, while Eleanor <laughs> feels like she is um, finding herself, her friends and her family are very concerned with her. Um, they think that she's grieving in an unhealthy way. She's dressing in Katie's clothes. She's living in Katie's apartment. She is behaving outside of her normal self. I mean, let's face it, for lack of a better term, she is a librarian. She has a very uh, un uh, unassuming and unexciting life. But suddenly, she's doing all these things, and her family is concerned that she's grieving unnaturally. She fights against this, th this idea because it's very offensive to her. She's like, you know, can I not be exciting? Can I not be beautiful? Can I not be sexy? Can I not be alluring? Or were all those things what you associated with my sister? Am I not allowed to be those things in my own right? Um, and because of that, there's like a huge push and pull between herself, her family, and her friends. Um, and then it all comes to a head because while Trey, you know, he feels like he's on this crash course because he lost two people very close to him. What Eleanor doesn't know is one of the people that he thought was very close to him was her sister. So while him and Eleanor are getting closer, she actually takes him home with her to meet her parents once they kind of decide that, you know, their relationship is heading somewhere. And he sees pictures of her sister. Even though he's been in her apartment, he never knew this is where Katie lived. So he knew Katie in her life. Um, before she passed away. And Eleanor finding that out, it does something to her. Um, and she kind of spirals and thinks, well, maybe everyone's right. Maybe I'm only behaving this way because I'm grieving my sister. Maybe the only thing Trey ever saw in me is what he saw in my sister. And she's very upset and very overcome by the idea that he's not really interested in her. And Trey is trying to make her understand that's, you know, that's not the case. I actually really do like you. Um, I'm interested in you. And so they have to find their way back to each other. Um, I loved this book. It was a great standalone novel. Um, it gave a lot of in-depth... It, it, it was gut-wrenching, almost, to a point. You feel the sorrow that Eleanor carries with her for losing her sister. You kind of feel that despair that maybe she never will be able to break out of this, you know, whole hum life. And she's really trying to find herself and find some happiness. Um, I was very glad that I stumbled upon this book. It's not something that I had ever even heard of. Um, but it was a great read. It was entertaining. It was sexy. It was exciting. It was sad. Um, watching Trey and Eleanor come together and their relationship kind of blossom, I think that's what draws me to this kind of novel all the time. Because while, yes, it's sex, there's still a story there. There's a love story. There's heartbreak. There's anguish. There's pain. Even Trey, as a guy... You know, he's wonderful, <laughs> in lack, for lack of a better term. He's great. He was a great character to read about. He's entertaining. He's smart. He's caring. He's understanding. He is uh, whimsical in a way. He And I don't want to give away all of the book because I've given away a very large portion of it. But he pays attention to detail. He listens to her and takes in what would you know, things that would make her happy. And that's what every woman wants. We want a guy who pays attention to those details, who can take us to do things that, you know, may not necessarily be up his alley, but because you want to make us happy. You know, that's something that 
you guys push for or you guys attempt to do. Um, I think that he found himself in terms of his struggle at, you know, the inevitable time I, I would hope that most men find themselves in, which is, you know, I'm an old, I'm getting up in age. And while sex is always going to be amazing, what else is there? What's deeper? Um, he comes from a family of, of, I believe he's got, you know, several sisters and brothers. Um, and he has this very intimate conversation with his brother, which is one of the things that I loved about this book. Um, and I'm not going to give it away, but they said something that I thought was very true, which is, it's not about how hot the person is. It's not about any of them. But when you find that right person for you, you know, even their mucus doesn't bother you. Even their, even their, their bodily fluids are not an issue for you because you love them and everything that is them. Um, and at certain, at a certain point, Trey realizes that he is falling in love with Eleanor, and these are the things about her that he loves. Um, in terms of the smut nut scale, um, so I'm gonna go over that one more time just in case those of you who don't wear, you know, we have the smut nut scale. So in terms of the scale, in terms of smut, this was probably. Mm, I'd say a seven, high seven, low eight um, on the smut scale. Not the dirtiest I've ever read, definitely not, but you know, not the most tame. I think the best parts of the book um, in terms of the smut were when they were doing their, uh, their window peeking. Um, she performed for him. I think he performed for her once or twice. Um, them together, it was interesting. It was hot, of course, but I like those kind of, you know, those scenes better in the book when she was across the hall performing for him, um, or I'm sorry, across the street performing for him. And he was watching. That was very sexy, very erotic, very, um very voyeuristic and maybe you know that's just because I have a little bit of a warrior inside of me as well but hey <laughs> whatever floats your boat um the book itself I would say high eight low nine great story that one and done you know I'm more of a series girl but as a one and done this was pretty epic um it told a great story, gave great character development. It came together. The conclusion was beautiful. Um, it was heartwarming. It, it tugged at all the right strings for me. Um, I always say that certain things, certain movies or books or whatever should be made into... Um, <laughs> you know, I always have this theory that certain things should be made into movies. Uh, this would probably be a great like uh, Lifetime movie. Um, but done well. No, you know, no shade to Lifetime, but we all know this, this is one of those movies that I would probably want to see, like, you know, on TV, a made-for-TV movie that is actually pretty interesting. Um, and if we ever got back to those made-for-TV movies, I'd want to see this. Looking Inside was definitely, you know, made-for-TV movie epic. Um, I love Beth Carey. I love her writing style. It gives you something to grasp onto. It always tugs at more than one more than one heartstring. So I'm very glad that I read this book. I'm very glad that I picked it up. For those of you who have never read a Best Carry novel, this would definitely be a good first one. If you have read several of her books and never picked this book up, do yourself a favor. You are missing out. Um, so I am I'm going to say good night now um, and leave you with this. And you guys have a good one.